and welcome to the Go No Go Show here on Thursday, October 27th. My name is Tyler Wood. Uh, I am not joined this week by Alex Cole, my partner in crime. Uh, he is busy in a uh, home remodel, but I'm glad that you're joining us this week uh, so that we can talk a little bit about the markets. Let's dive right into uh, all that we've got going on, starting with our Go No Go cross asset heat map. Uh, we've got a number of new changes afoot in the markets. Um, so we want to take a top level uh, perspective, uh, top down approach. So with this cross asset heat map, what we're looking at are the go no go trend colors for four different asset classes. In our first panel, we've got the S&P 500 still in a weak no go trend, uh, painting pink bars. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the price action and look at some candlestick patterns in a minute. Uh, for treasury bond prices, still in a no-go, uh, still some bond selling, but uh, we will take a look at the TNX uh, treasury yields, which have cooled a little bit, uh, showing us this weaker form of the no-go trend on the prices. Remember those move inverse. Uh, we also see a new go trend emerging in the U.S. Commodities Index. And we're going to take a quick look at oil and the energy sector as we move through today's show. And last but not least, uh, a few signs of counter trend correction happening for the US dollar trade, uh, which has certainly been a headwind to risk assets uh, throughout this year and, uh, and proposing a lot of uh, a lot of headache for uh, for many investors. So let's dive right in. Let's talk a little bit about the S&P 500. So right now we're looking at this on a weekly basis. Uh, we're seeing that uh, the long-term no-go trend still intact. These relief rallies, which are very seductive, uh, still haven't brought us out of the no-go trend colors uh, throughout this entire drawdown here in 2022. But on a weekly basis, we can see that, uh, that last week and again this week, uh, we're seeing some strength in the market, uh, not enough to push us out of those no-go trend colors. And that draws our eye to the lower panel, the go -no go oscillator. We've seen that volume has picked up. So when this green line shifts from the, uh, the aqua to the dark blue, uh, we know we're seeing heavy relative volume on these uh, strong weeks upward. Haven't yet uh, reached the zero neutral line uh, for the go -no go oscillator. So we're still seeing some negative momentum on the weekly basis. But if we jump into a daily chart of the S&P 500, uh, the story is starting to look a little different. And in fact, I was talking with Alex yesterday uh, watching this bar, uh, which we could call a, a gravestone doji or an evening star. Uh, but that candle formation where we had really strong price moves to the upside in intraday trading yesterday, uh, but then came back down to the very lows to close the day. So uh, certainly seeing the uh, bears take hold during yesterday's trading session uh, to bring us back down to the lows for the close. That uh, that candle, as it was shaping yesterday, had actually left the no-go colors. We were in amber and even peeked into a, a brief aqua go trend uh, for a minute. But as we always state, uh, none of these tools uh, are, are ever changed in hindsight. So during the day, while that uh, bar or candle is being formed, it'll fluctuate based on the volatility of the day. But what we saw uh, at the end, at the close of the day, that's locked in and never changed uh, after the uh, period ends. In the go-to-go -go oscillator, we are seeing positive momentum. We broke out of this small squeeze. Uh, volume has dried up a little bit, but we're not yet at overbought territory uh, for the S&P 500 on this daily basis. Still in a weak no-go trend. Obviously, uh, bearish configuration on the candlestick pattern. And so we'll watch to see if that, uh, if that trend concludes this week uh, still in the no-go territory. Moving on from the S&P 500, we want to take a look at some of our macro indicators. Uh, so we talked about uh, a little a little weakness in the bond selling, that no-go trend for U.S. Treasury bonds. The inverse of that is going to be the yield. So this is the 10-year TNX. And we've been in this relentless go trend. Uh, we've seen it climb higher and higher. Uh, but we're seeing this counter trend correction right now. We see the, the red triangle signaling that momentum had left the overbought conditions, right? So when it departs from those extreme overbought levels, uh, we know that that is going to pause that uptrend, at least in the intermediate period, in the short term. And uh, right now we are testing the zero line and beginning to build a squeeze. So we're riding the zero line here for two bars, uh, seeing this TNX uh, trend take a, take a little brief pause. That uh, certainly has led to favorable conditions for risk assets, in particular U.S. equities. 
And we'll see if this trend indeed rolls over further. The first sign of that, the leading indicator for us would be a move below the zero line on the go no go oscillator. So when we see negative momentum or enthusiastic selling, that's really a threat uh, to that upward go trend. Uh, beyond negative momentum, then obviously we'd be looking for uh, color trend change of that composite blend of technical indicators, giving us the weight of the evidence uh, without all that clutter on our charts. So a little brief pause in the uh, rally in the TNX in those treasury yields uh, being very favorable for U.S. equities. Let's take a look at the dollar index, another major macro force that's been impacting U.S. equity markets all year long. Uh, we have seen this, uh, this very durable trend. If we actually jump out to a, a weekly basis on that U.S. dollar chart, we can see just how far we have come. Uh, but serious weakness this week on uh, on the U.S. dollar, we're using UUP, which is a uh, an ETF of the dollar index. But if we jump back into the daily chart, uh, just looking at price action, we have dropped out of our go trend colors. We're in neutral. These amber bars telling us, uh, as Jeff, Jesse Livermore once quoted, uh, "There's a time to go long, a time to go short, and a time to go fishing." So these are our go fish bars where the market is presenting a series of uncertainty of neutral readings in that composite blend of trend indicators. Most importantly, what I'm seeing on this chart is that we created this squeeze, briefly blipped above into positive territory, went right back into a max squeeze formation. So that compression of volatility, really helping articulate and visualize that tug of war between buyers and sellers, right? So technical analysis being a data visualization tool to understand investor emotions in the marketplace. We can see that happen in real time on this US dollar chart as, uh, as buyers and sellers really could not take control of the move. Uh, we saw uh, prices consolidate, the range of price action consolidate, and then that break out of the max squeeze, out of that volatility indicator to the downside presenting a very significant uh, piece of information for us and a real threat to the go trend for the US dollar. So the break below, now we've seen volume pick up to the downside, uh, gap lower yesterday on the US dollar. These are big moves in the currency markets for sure, um, but also playing out in the equity space uh, through those intermarket relationships. So we're, we're looking for further weakness here on the US dollar uh, with that stronger uh, volume negative momentum, uh, we would anticipate a trend color change uh, in the days and weeks ahead for the US dollar. So maybe we have finally seen the end of that relentless rally in the US dollar. Let's check in, check in on US oil. Uh, another important change, we, we were looking at that cross asset heat map at the beginning, uh, seeing the US commodities index break into a new go trend. A lot of that being driven by the energy space. And here on the US oil chart, uh, we saw the inverse of what we just saw on that US dollar chart. Again, the, the build to the max squeeze, that volatility compression as we, uh, as we see this basing pattern, a, a very serious higher low in this downward trend. And now we've broken above into, uh, a broken up out of the go no go oscillator, the max squeeze, and on a trend change. So we are in go conditions for US oil, uh, positive momentum, still only at a reading of one, nowhere near overbought. Uh, but what's really interesting and what, what we like to do with Gonogo -Go charts is just use some of those classical technical analysis uh, tools like long-term trend lines, support and resistance areas. You can see those much more clearly on a chart that isn't cluttered with endless indicators. So that break uh, into a Go trend brought us right up to that long downward sloping trend line. And here we are today uh, just eking out uh, a win above that uh, downward sloping trend line on positive momentum. So for U.S. oil fans, uh, this may be uh, the beginning of that new upward go trend. Of course, we've seen uh, moves into go trends to, to just be rejected at this line before. Um, so we'd like to see confirmation uh, today and follow through tomorrow uh, to see that that trend has really taken hold and uh, upside price action to follow. Now, moving on from some of our macro indicators, we want to take a look at the S&P 500. Now, we looked at the price action of the index itself, uh, but we want to take a look at what's going on under the hood in terms of the relative strength of the sector performance 
within the S&P 500. So this is the go, no go sector roadmap. And just to walk you through really quickly, we've stripped out the price action, but we've taken the ETFs of each sector of the S&P and we're just doing a simple ratio chart of that sector against the index. So in the top panel, we've got the XLK, the information technology sector relative to the S&P 500. Uh, we've got um, consumer discretionary and communications. So these are really our growth areas of the S&P 500, those three sectors, all underperforming on a relative basis a no-go trending index. So these are leading. The, these sectors are leading us lower. Um, we've seen underperformance from those growth equity sectors. If we move on and look at the XLE, the energy sector of the S&P has been strong for months and uh, continuing with financials to see more constructive behavior, again, relative to the index. So in a, in a no-go or in a downtrend, these are outperforming the index, which could mean that they are just... Uh, um, going down less, so to speak. Uh, but for tactical asset allocation managers out there, for registered investment advisors, this is really important to get the sector bet right. Um, there have been some really great white papers by folks much smarter than Alex and I uh, talking about what percentage of the gain comes from just being in the right sector group. And, and those are estimated around 80%. We've got the XLI, the industrials, coming into a, a strong go trend. We've also got uh, the building, the material sector of the S&P 500, also in a strong go trend. Uh, healthcare and uh, consumer staples continuing to uh, bring that index higher. Now, at the index level, there are a lot of analysts out there commenting about you know, whether or not this rally will uh, present strong gains for equity investors writ large. And there's a lot more to be understood in terms of the style. Whoops, we're going to jump to a, a little different chart here. Right now, we want to just talk about the small cap versus large cap debate. And so we've seen strength in small caps. This is the uh, S&P 600 small cap ETF uh, divided by the S&P 100 large cap. And so uh, the relative performance here, seeing this go trend on the right side of a chart, uh, says that small caps are really outperforming uh, the large cap uh, peers. And that's really telling for us. It might not mean substantial gains at the index level if we see broad participation from small cap shares. Uh, but for investors looking to allocate uh, their capital wisely, we're looking to find those trends that are uh, outperforming in go trends on both a relative and an absolute basis. Um, so keep in mind, we've got small caps on this relative chart breaking out into positive momentum out of that squeeze and taking off. We've also got this green trend continuation icon under price that tells us when momentum comes back in the direction of the underlying trend. Um, so small cap outperformance uh, of the large caps. The other piece that I wanted to check in with all of you uh, this week is a new trend emerging in our favorite old Bitcoin. Uh, so we've got this long-term channel, uh, this very drawn-out basing pattern that's taken uh, most of the second half of 2022. Uh, for first things first, shares or securities have to stop going down before they can go back up. And right now, what we're seeing is a new go trend on Bitcoin, but obviously still well within this uh, uh, price range, this channel. Uh, last time we tested these 24,000 levels, uh, we were rejected back. Um, but we didn't see precipitous uh, lower price uh, um, uh, matriculate on Bitcoin. So when we're seeing this go trend, obviously upside targets of around 24,000. If we can break through this price channel, if we see strong enough momentum to push us above that, that area, then we'll be looking for a next level of uh, resistance right around 30,000. Um, so lots of upside potential for Bitcoin. Uh, I just want to draw your attention to uh, the go to go oscillator in the bottom panel. Whoops, the cursor got away from me there, folks. The bottom panel, we, we broke out of a series of squeezes. We're really trying to make up our mind here about what direction we're going to be trading in Bitcoin. Uh, but this decisive final move to the upside has now picked up heavy volume. Uh, we are not yet overbought. We're at a four. So strong, positive momentum hasn't yet hit extremes. And we're on the weak form of a go trend uh, within this price channel. So something to keep in mind if you're looking at uh, asset allocation, uh, looking for those uh, uh, securities that have been really beaten down that are showing signs of, of recovery. Obviously, taking that back to the macro picture, when we see a pause in the interest rates and we see a pause in that uh, upward trend of the U.S. dollar, uh, we, we start to see some life uh, breathing into some of these risk assets like cryptocurrencies 
and, uh, and U.S. equities. Last one I want to finish with today, uh, this came from a, a, a daily chart uh, that we put out, daily trade ideas, good uh, go-no-go research. Uh, if you are interested in subscribing, you can find that on gonogocharts.com. Uh, but Amark, precious metals, uh, breaking out into a new go trend. And it's, it's again, just drawing your eye to those max squeezes. The volatility compression, what we've learned from Bollinger Bands and Keltner Bands and many smart innovators that came long before Alex and I is that when you see that compression of volatility, trading in the direction of the break can be very favorable. You can see those higher velocity moves out of a break of compressed volatility. So what we saw in this no-go trend, compression of the price range, we saw tightening like a coiled spring. It just gained pressure. And then when we see an upside break from that no-go trend, that's what's uh, signaling, that's the early indication of that trend change into a weak uh, go trend. Obviously upside resistance uh, available to us at around 34, uh, seeing a lot of uh, congestion, a lot of overhead supply at that area, but precious metals uh, starting to uh, gain a little luster, so to speak. Uh, next week, my good friend Alex Cole is going to be with you to walk you through what's happening in the markets from a go-no-go -go trend perspective. I am going to be with the one and only David Keller in Mumbai, India for the CMT Association's Asia Pacific Summit here in 2022. I really appreciate everybody being with us every week for the Go No Go show here on Stock Charts TV. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. You can also check out Go No Go charts on YouTube. And uh, for all of you who are uh, who are able, download that stockchartstv.com on-demand platform uh, so you can carry this show and many others with you wherever you go. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again next week on Thursday. Cheers. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.